We, we are tired. <laughs> we are where we've been for... 13 nights. 13 nights? Mm. We made it to 13 nights? Do you remember when we got here, you were like, we might get five days, we might get yeah, a bit longer. Yeah, we didn't think we'd make it. Uh, <laughs> turns out there is a small gas station with a uh, small grocery store that we were able to get sort of minor essentials from on two small trips during the time that we were here. But we are now out of food. Yeah, so we just went there for bread and eggs. Because really. that's all they had. And they only had <laughs> eggs one time. And their their selection. No vegetables. So we haven't had vegetables since Friday. So no. we definitely have to move on today. Or I'm going to get scurvy. <laughs> um, the There's a real risk on a boat. I know it is. Mm-hmm. The problem is it's so nice here. Like I've really loved being moored here. We're just on the outskirts of Redford but it feels so remote and there's the woods next to us so on our walks like we literally bump into no one there's some walkers about and there's some people it's just not as busy at all no. by far as it was in Redford. so i've i've resisted moving because yeah and it's allowed us to have this very nice walk when we take george up yeah so our one hour exercise is lovely quite can you know quite quite pleasant it's not through a bunch of apple trees and it's yeah it's not to a park it's not along the towpath it's in the woods and it's yeah. just been so nice yeah but all good things must come to an end <laughs> when at the end of the day the larder is empty <laughs> we've literally got nothing um, well we've, we do have we have some dried rice we've and some, some dried pasta and baked beans which i have discovered is not a good combination <laughs> you haven't discovered you haven't eaten that <laughs> <laughs> I have assumed it's not a good conversation. So, yeah, so we're ready to move to Redford. So basically, we're we're just finishing the journey we began two weeks ago to get water. It just makes sense for us to stay in Redford once we're there because it means we can go to the shops in a week's time when we get low again. Minimizing our travel, it makes sense for us to stay in Redford, yeah. which is what we should be doing. Yeah. So there was the mooring that we were on last time outside the fire station, but there was also a couple of boats above the lock um, by the aqueduct. So we're going to see if we get on there. It might be a bit shallow, so we might not be able to, but it just might be slightly quieter than the one we were on before. Past experience being what it is, it might be full of shopping carts. So in the meantime, meantime, in between time, between here and us and there, and where we're going, there are two locks, There's one. potentially just one, yeah. and, uh, and and yeah, it's just going to get slightly more urban as we it's go. It's really not far. A few bridges, so I've taken down the chimney because I did notice last time that <clears throat> it's a tight fit. It's, it's been, not an impossible fit, but it's a tight fit. It's been beautiful weather since we've been here. Like I kind of got lulled into the sense of that's just the weather now. Mm. <laughs> but today it's a bit. It rained yesterday. It's a bit overcast, and it's forecast to rain for a couple of weeks. So. It might be a bit harder, but... Say la vie. <laughs> what can you do? All right, let's go. We're on our way. Misery, happiness. Either way, that way. Oh, George, why are you so cute? The visitor moorings are just two-day moorings, but the limits have obviously been suspended for lockdown. We're really sad to be leaving these woods that we've been exploring for the last two weeks. This is Rutford Cemetery. There's a shortcut through it to the local shops. (music) 
Seeing as this is just a short cruise and a reverse of the cruise that we did a few weeks ago, we thought we'd take the opportunity to film us travelling through a lock in real time. We often get asked how long it takes to go through a lock, so here's your chance to find out. Okay, well I might actually speed this part up, otherwise we'll be here for ages. It takes a few minutes to fill the lock to the point where I can open the gate. I realise now that I should have had the sound recorder on, as you're just getting the sound through the GoPros most of the time. As Michael brings the boat in, I drop the paddles on the top gate that we opened to fill the lock. This has to be done, otherwise water will continue to flood into the lock through the sluice as we try to descend. You can see the bywash next to the lock, where any excess water from the pound can go round the lock and into the pound below. This is West Retford Lock and Lock number 58. On this canal, the lock numbers count up from Chesterfield itself, which is the original terminus of the navigation. We're only going to be able to navigate as far as Lock 21, as the canal has not yet been restored beyond that point. Although there are plans in place to do that, so fingers crossed for that. When he's almost into the lock, Michael puts the engine into reverse to bring the boat to a halt. Once the boat has stopped, Michael jumps off and shuts the top gate behind him. Now it's time to open the downstream paddles to let the water out of the lock so we can descend. Michael will often do the offside paddle and then jump back on the boat before it gets too low, but in this lock he leaves it to me. The water in every lock behaves differently when you open the paddles. Going down is definitely more gentle than coming up. In a wide lock, we'll often open the paddles quite slowly so we can assess how the water is going to push the boat about. In narrow locks, it's less of an issue as the boat's held in position by the lock walls, although you can still get pulled forward with quite some force if you open the paddles too quickly. You can see how the water's already gone down by almost a foot. And there's all the water below the lock gates rushing out into the pound. At this point, Michael spots a frog in the lock with him. The poor thing probably didn't bargain on a boat coming in today. Oh, where's he gone? Ah, there he is. Don't get squished, little one. Meanwhile, George is his usual patient self, ready to throw us the life ring if need be. The 
with much concern about this frog. We've been descending pretty slowly, not assisted by the fact that the water is leaking through the top lock gates. I walk across and open the offside pedal to speed things up. I'm so tempted to speed up this footage, but I promise to show the lock in real time, so I'll resist. You can see all the water leaking in through the top gate. Finally, the water's equalised with the pan below, so I can get the gates open. Some people will jump across these half gates, but I never think it's worth the risk. It's a long way down and I don't fancy getting wet, so I'll always walk the long way around using the other gates. I drop the paddle on this side and open the gate so Michael can finally move the boat out. Michael's still pretty worried about the frog. We don't want to squish him between the boat and the lock wall, and we don't want to leave him in the lock with no means of escape. So Michael moves the boat really slowly, making sure the frog comes out of the lock too and clears the gate.
So there we have it, ten and a half minutes to descend this lock. That's pretty quick going. We're not far off the mooring now, so George and I walk. These are the moorings we're aiming for, and there's already two boats here, so we'll have to squeeze into the gap between them. The only issue is they're on the off side of the canal, and although there is a public footpath along there, I need to walk all the way to the next lock to cross over the canal and then come back and help Michael moor up. We are back in Retford. Yep, just across from the park. Nice spot. It's the park we kept going to before, and it's really lovely, but it's a long walk because there's no bridge. <laughs> yeah. The chainsaw is about to start in a second, so we've got to talk pretty quick. So, we've made it down one lock. We nearly killed a frog, but thankfully he survived. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not happy that we're back in Retford. I'm happy we're on this moor, and we'll see what this is like for a few days. Redford's uh, nice enough. The main thing is, is it was that damn fire station yeah, that was making so much and, noise. And well, the, I mean, not be complaining about the fire station itself. No, it's just, it's just like just them going about their exercises yeah. and stuff. Keep doing your job. And just don't don't turn that alarm on beside my head. And there was a there's a chainsaw. There was a bench by outside the boat that people kept sitting on and drinking and. And here, there's just chainsaws occasionally. And there's also um, a cockerel that uh, might wake us up. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing. It's been sleeping in quite a bit. No, my only thing is, is we have arrived at noon, and that's when the cockerel decided to crow. So I don't think it's going to wake us up. <laughs> the cockerels are on our, uh, our time. He's on like, yeah, he's George, on like we'll get you water. Pacific time or something. Anyways, <laughs> lockdown time. He's a funny, 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 funny chicken. <sighs> so yeah. Uh, yeah. See what it's like. See how it goes. Michael's about to go and do the groceries and Asta, there's a queue obviously. And I'm going to take the Dumping. collection of George's contributions with me. We, we, there was no dog bin at the last morning, so we had to walk quite a while to, after we collected them. <laughs> People are walking past me and so I've got this cannonball swinging back and forth on the end of the whole <laughs> Looking at George, gang. What did that dog? What is that dog been eating? What did you feed it? Yeah, good food actually. It turns out. To... Yeah, George has been eating some really good food lately. We got sent some meadow farm dog food. Some meadow farm dog food, which was sent to us by Escape to the Cut. It's like their boat business, um, and it was delivered to us down in West Stockworth on the boat. It was great, um, and it's been really good for George. Like. Possibly TMI, but we've noticed an improvement in uh, who's? his mood. <laughs> we've noticed an improvement in his mood. We've noticed an improvement in his poos. We're not talking about his poos. People criticize us when we talk about this. Anyway, let's just say George you, is a regular dog. If you have a dog and you want to support a boat business, we will link them below. And we yeah, recommend exactly. it. Like, yeah, it's good food. Comes George, George recommends. George, George has been happy with it. George has actually been happier with yeah. it, which is good. Yeah. And we've been happier with it. We just need to get it delivered again. Yeah, and that's going to be the interesting part. They just needed to build, they said um, they just need a building. So if you're more outside a building, they can deliver it there. But we're not outside a building. No building. And a road, like obviously we need a road. Yeah. Next time. So, yeah.
So in the meantime, we'll be going back on the bad stuff. On the well, not bad stuff, but the not great stuff. Yeah. So money previous incoming. <laughs> yep. Animal list. Where you come to hear about dog poop <laughs> and frog. Yeah. I wish I was wearing my Kermit t-shirt. I totally went out of my way to save that prop. I'm like pushing the boat over because he's just going along the side, right in squish area. Yeah, because like I was like, oh, Michael, I don't know what I'm going to film today. I know I'll film the I'll film the look in real time. And the whole thing is just Michael looking over the side of the boat, worrying about this froggy. Yeah, well, otherwise it would have been Michael lo looking over the side of the boat, feeling guilty about the frog splat. <laughs> So, yeah. I got my priorities straight. I wonder how that real time will come out. <sighs> this vlog's probably like a year long because, well, not an hour long because. <sighs> because we're talking. I'm hungry. She's hungry. In order to feed her, I need to go get groceries. Because so, we've got no food, remember? Yeah, I'm going to go stand in line for a while. All right, so thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, comment down below. If you like the channel, subscribe and hit that bell if you want notifications. Oh my god. What's happened? <laughs> I'm in a hurry. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>